representing East Side, East Manhattan. I mean, I've, I've done the Bay 90s, and I've taken my kids when they were little down to pay telephone and gas bill at Manhattan Hardware. So I used the B, the city a lot when it was smaller and not so much traffic and you could park. <laughs> now I'm going to start with the beginning. I will begin at the train station in Minneapolis, Minnesota in the year 1942. As I waved goodbye from the train that was headed for Hollywood, I promised I would end up working in the costume department of a movie studio, even if just to sew buttons on Tyrone Power's shirt. <laughs> uh, incidentally, he backed into me on a set one day to get out of the way of a boom. A you know, boom is on the set that uh, wheeled in close, but did not actually meet him or work on men's costumes because they were separate. Women's wardrobe was separate from the men's. But first I met the man of my dreams and went to work for the war effort at Douglas Aircraft when Tom was drafted. And there they saw that I had uh, artistic background and they sent me to UCLA Extension School and I became a mechanical engineer mm -hmm. and I, I designed jigs for the SBD-2 airplane at Douglas. Mm -hmm. And I felt pretty good about that because there weren't too many engineers or mechanical engineers in the department. So that was, it was good. And as the war turned down, I finally applied for the job I went to fashion school for. I ended up at 20th Century Fox on Pico Boulevard in West LA. And that was a wonderful experience because I got to meet Celeste Holmes. I mean, I can't, Ori Kelly, the designer, I mean, just so many wonderful things at the studio that it's like a dream. And now, I, long story short, the war ended. Tom came home, and soon after, we were married. That was 1948. First child, 1949. Second boy, 1950. Our Inglewood apartment became crowded. Saw an ad in the newspaper, Liberty Builders Homes coming to Hawthorne. $199 down, <laughs> which was refunded. It was for impounds and taxes, and if you were under the GI Bill, you got it back. <laughs> and, of course, we went to look. The model house we picked was sold out at that location. Aviation Boulevard between Imperial and El Segundo was across from Douglas Aircraft. <laughs> Uh, but the salesman told us they were building another village soon up the road, I think in a city called Manhattan Beach. <laughs> uh, actually, that's, he, he wasn't sure. <laughs> we found um, that at that spot, Aviation and Compton, it was Compton to the east, oh, Marine was Compton. Yeah. And the reason that it was changed to Marine is because Compton had was a bad reputation and the merchants all wanted the street <laughs> changed to marine yes. and to the east and aviation and marine to the west to the east only fields and not manhattan beach northwest corner an army encampment southwest corner brown's farm Went back, paid our $199 down. We were homeowners. So many years of happiness in Liberty Village, 500 homes, 500 wonderful families and friends for us and our six children. Wow. Pollywog was the name of one of the critters who inhabited the pond to the west of us. Yes. <laughs> I would come upon toads bigger than my hand as I cultivated our flower garden. 
and every so often one of Farmer Brown's carrots or lettuce would appear in the backyard or front yard. <laughs> Crawdads came home with the children, tadpoles they loved. Thanks to Frank and Jeanette Warren, anybody remember Frank and Jeanette Warren? No. Efforts to build Pollywog Park. They had no <clears throat> permission to do this, but they encouraged all of us to come down on Saturdays and pull the weeds, which were we also had Premier Little League was on Manhattan Beach Boulevard at the time, which always got flooded out every year. So they moved it over to 15th and, uh, or 19th, yeah, 15th. Frank Warren was a graphic artist at Ramo Woolridge, Remo. DRW, is Ramo Woolridge, who designed our Pollywog sign that's on the concession stand. As chairman for Pollywog Neighborhood Girl Scouts, they, together with the VFW, planted a tree in the park for POW Captain Mark Smith. He could not attend. He had been released but was in the hospital stateside, but his family came. It was a beautiful sight, all the girls in uniform and white gloves. We were so proud of them. We later had an overnight in that very same park, and the sprinklers went on. <laughs> <laughs> the scouts, always ready, covered the sprinkler heads with trash cans as I raced home to call the city to turn them off. No cell phones in those days. <laughs> but I didn't have to go far. I lived in Liberty Village. I could go on forever. How we, Liberty Village Women's Club, Save the apartment corner, you know where all the apartments are? For Trader Joe's. <laughs> it was First Borders grocery store that moved in there. Hired a lawyer, George Lowry, for $500. That was $1 from each homeowner. He got the number of buildings to be lowered. Just look back at that $199 down. Those who have, of us, who have stayed all 66 years, it's amazing. Right now, the homes are going over there, just not even added on to $1,300,199. And so that's east side, and I did, a lot on the west side because we helped build the American Martyrs Church. Mm -hmm. And that's where the kids went and it's always been a pleasure to live. Do you recall what you paid for your home? What the price was when you purchased $9, it? $9,995. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, for a three bedroom, where, right? Where did you live? Uh, Harkness, right in the middle. I wanted a house in the middle of the track. I didn't want to be near aviation. Manhattan Beach by Boulevard. 19, or Pardon? By 19? 16. 16? Mm -hmm. 16. Well, yeah. there's 15th and 19th. Right. There's no in between, so I'm right, right in the middle yeah. of that street. I'm on Windy Way, and oh, we yeah. paid 9700 Oh, yours was, well, oh, what, was how many bedrooms? Um, it was two bedrooms originally. Yeah, well, see, my ours was three bedrooms. Oh, yeah. Ours, that's a big place. <laughs> <laughs> Betty and I go way back, yes. and I, when, when we bought our house, they had built all these new tract homes, and I had one of the older homes, and I couldn't afford that $9,000. <laughs> so I got, I, I bought the $7,000 house on payments. Was that about 1950? Uh, that was, let's see, you. about 57? Oh, 1950 is when we moved okay, in. Okay, then it would have been, yeah, yeah it would have been. Yeah. Well, I moved, October, over, I moved in, in 1957. No, 55. So, so you're like 57. That yeah, was in Liberty Village? No. no, 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 no. Tenth and Row. Tenth and Row. Oh, okay. I didn't hear that. But on Wendy Way moved in in October. Right. We didn't move in until November. They started in that corner. They started yeah. there, yeah. <laughs> We're Wendy Way in 23rd. Right. And that's where it started. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of these but it, how many years have you lived there? Was, we bought it then, 1950. My parents did. 
Okay, your parents do. Um, one thing that's interesting is when they built that, I don't know if you would remember or if you had the same situation. On 23rd Street, we had a brown, a light brown telephone booth. It was our only phone for some amount well, of time. There was one on uh, 15th, too. Was there? Between uh, <laughs> Baymont and yeah, our How long were they there? Public phone. Before they, we got phones in our yeah. home? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I remember them being there, I just don't remember how long. What is your name? I'm Sam Barr, B-A-R-R. -R. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Barr. Well, I know, I know your, your mother. My mom, Margaret. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've worked with her a lot. What's your last name? Young. Very young. Yeah. And uh, that Liberty Village Women's Club was a big uh, help to make the city, City Hall, recognize that we were existing over on East. Because I remember we held one of our meetings at uh, Manhattan Heights School, which is no longer. But um, and Ed Linecker was the owner of the mobile station on the corner, the southwest corner of uh, Manhattan Beach Boulevard and, and Sepulveda. And he was running for councilman. So, so he came to speak to us at our club meeting. And he came in and he said, oh, oh. Well, according to City Hall, you're supposed to be in moccasins and braids. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a, a, another lady who grew up over on the south side of Manhattan Beach Boulevard. She said it was they had fox farms there. Does anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. They had a chicken farm back. But she said they had fox life. farms too. Do you remember the property owner's hall? Oh my. I, I wrote a really good story about that in a writing class because that was such a disappointment when they tore it down and built the round library yes. and then took that away from us. But anyway, mm -hmm. but uh, the club used to have their Christmas dances there and, and your mother went. And um, we had the boutiques. Christmas boutique, and we would work on our boutique at a different house every month when we had a, the meeting of doing that, and bring our children, if you would believe, and pack a lunch for them and put them in the backyard of that house, <laughs> and we did all of our work, <laughs> and and they they got along. There was just very few you know complaints about the kids. They didn't have any. So it was it was a nice neighborhood. I I have a lot of contact with them, and of course, uh, her husband was my youngest son's coach in Little League, mm -hmm. and they were a great team. <laughs> yeah, they were. Yeah. Are so, you still in Hartness? Pardon me. Are you still in Hartness? I am. <laughs> I'm the matriarch of the street. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I don't know how many other um, original owners that there are. Do you know Al Raffles? Oh, He's yeah, on I know Lindbergh. Al. Yeah. He's my former father-in-law. I know, and his, his, wife's father. his son, I was den mother for his son. Yeah, yeah Steve Raffles. So, and my husband, I didn't say, but my husband was the uh, some kind of chairman of the Boy Scouts for the east side. Mm -hmm. And I was... Uh, neighborhood chairman for the yes. Girl Scouts. So it was it was a really going community. I, we had something going all the time. Of course, with six kids, I had one yeah. <laughs> for each one <laughs> doing something. But you know, I, I loved it, and I love Manhattan Beach. Like and, and for this parade, the, I, the, I, I was going to ride in a dial-a-ride bus that we decorated. Mm -hmm. And then somebody said, but there's somebody who's going to have a special sport car or antique. It wasn't yeah. an antique. Yeah, it was car. And, and they want you to ride in that. The problem is nobody could see me because it was this. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun, and I, I just love it. And I would like to donate 
this for the historical society because when they planted the tree, the VFW asked our neighborhood if we would do, or the Girl Scouts, if we would be the color guards and, and join in, and that's when it was so beautiful. And this is what they said to me, and I believe it was in the 60s. They didn't put a date or anything, but it was a VFW that planted the tree, and it's still in the park. It's a, it's a pine tree, one of the big ones. And they were supposed to put a plaque on it, but I don't think they did. Mm -hmm. But I want to give this to the well, historical society. I'll get it after the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody Thank have you any more questions? Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> it was. What, it was. What your your kids went to aviation then? I only had one. Uh, the youngest boy uh, went left Sarah High School and went to aviation. And of course, he had all of his credits. So they said, "What do we do with you?" You've got a half a year to finish out here. And uh, so they sent him to Scroff. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. he took um, uh, landscaping. They sent him to El Camino no. to, for the, in the music because they, didn't, they had no class for him at aviation. He did take, I think, a history class or something like that. And, but he, yeah, he went to aviation. My children all went to uh, kindergarten. The last one went to La Marina. Yeah. Yes. And La Marina is where my well, my Girl Scout headquarters was. And then we had to move out from there because what was the name of that football team that came? Express. Oh, Express. 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 Yeah. Express. Yeah. And so we used. I used to hold the Girl Scout meetings. If you've ever been in Manhattan Heights Community Center, mm -hmm. there's a the gym, and just to the to the south, yeah. there's a storage room where they store everything. Mm -hmm. Well, that used to be open, and that was my Girl Scout room. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were they were very nice to let me use that because I couldn't be in the cafetorium anymore. And how many remember that word? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> cafetorium. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they ate and performed yeah. and everything right. else there, but it was—it's a great town. It's a great city. We just have to kind of watch them, <laughs> watch what's happening. Sure do. Keep an eye on it. I've worked at as ambassador at City Hall for 18 years now. I was at South Bay Hospital until they closed it with Anita. At South Bay Hospital with Anita. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what does the ambassador to City Hall do? Well, I, I know it sounds funny, but Joan Dottenville, who spoke, oh, he's gone. Yeah. No, you're there, Joan. She is the one who decided as mayor, and after she retired, she said, we really need somebody in the, when people come in, so that they feel welcomed. And, you know, there's a telephone operator, but she could be busy. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very prominent job. <laughs> they all know I'm there when they come in. And uh, I love it. It's great. And I stuff envelopes and um, just direct people where they should go. And it's, I like it. Very good. So you're still doing that. And I'm still doing great. that. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. So, but it's uh, not too many... We had, Nikki was a wonderful ambassador and she passed away. Uh, actually, there's not that much to do. Before, when I first started, we <coughs> used to answer all the phone calls for the people that were looking for an inspector. And we had more to do. And now it's all the telephone. Telephone is all, it immediately oh, sends them to where they have to go and everything. <laughs> So it's not as much to do, but I, I like it, and I keep saying, well, maybe someday they'll not want us here anymore. But Anita comes to visit me at City Hall. What? You City visit her Hall. at City Hall? I, I can't hear you. She Some, said you visit her down at City Hall. All the time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's great. Yeah. I, I love it. And I didn't know my French had been 
had been born. Were you born here? No, I was born in Los Angeles. But but you've lived here for so many That's years. 1937. And I met him to the historical ministry at church right. at oh, American right. Martyrs, and he very prominent and mm -hmm. did a lot of work on that. Mm. So that's another source if anybody needs a, of the society needs a source of history. There's a lot of history to the American Martyr Church. Mm. They used to be right across the street from the Neptunians. Mm -hmm. Yes. On mm -hmm. island. On yeah. island. Mm -hmm. The old church was yeah, there. Yeah, it was a block away from the two yeah. the But, you know, when you So are they aware of what we're doing here? <laughs> well, Betty and I are. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the that counts. Because we're old time. <laughs> but they're not, I think they're starting up again. They come, but we have so much history in that room. We have a room in one of the yeah. Yeah, parish houses. Right. You have your own oh, archives, you, right? Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Mike we made a, a time, over there time chart yeah. thing. Timeline, yeah. Timeline, mm -hmm. marvelous. So when we do have an exhibit, uh, they usually have it when it's free mm -hmm. breakfast. It's pancake breakfast. For pancake breakfast mm -hmm. for the police and the firemen. Mm -hmm. And then we'll really have a big spread about the firemen. And Don Stone, you were mentoring, yeah. mentioning one of the uh, firemen, I mean policemen, mm -hmm. but there was a Don Stone. Do you remember him? No, I don't think I do. Well, he used to be the bus driver yes. for Meadows School. And, and everybody used to say, uh, they, they had a song about him, the kids did, about Don, the bus driver, and then he became a policeman for Manhattan Beach. Mrs. Stone is still on Manzanita. I think so. I'm not sure. I believe so. Yeah. But that was that was kind of fun. The kids all loved Don, you know. Yeah. They, yeah. He was great with them. And he helped them, you know, some of them the young ones might be afraid and stuff, but he was good. They all trusted Don. <clears throat> a lot of a lot of the old photos are were Don Stones. He took a lot of the photos. Oh yeah, yeah. Has. And there's also I just saw another picture of him. Yeah. Don, uh, I don't With his police car on the pier. Yeah. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Betty. <laughs>